Advertising and Marketing Research, the common paper for all the advertising, TY, BA, MMC, a student, fifth semester ka, aaj aapka copywriting ka paper ho gaya and tomorrow you have advertising and marketing research paper which most of the students are sending in messages regarding important topic, bata do, question, bata do. As you guys know, this paper is thoda sa theoretic, kafi sara methodology and uh, sort of questions are there and students are getting bonkers ki ma'am kuch yaad nahi reh raha hai. Topic or concepts humare class mein clear nahi hue hai. So this video is compiled by Melvina and Genevieve. So they have uh, put the important topic. Melvina ne kafi achi tarike se pure topic concept ko samjaya jo ki important topic hai for advertising and marketing research. Agar aapne padhai kiye but bohat confused ho, please ye video dekh lo till the end. You can pause, you can replay so that aapka jo kal ka paper hai wo bohat simple jayega. Aur agar aapne padhai nahi bhi shuru kiye, itna bhi kar loge na, to aap pakka pass to ho jaoge aapke paper mein. So make sure guys that you watch the video till the end. Hi guys, this is Pooja Gupta. Welcome to Media Mentor. If you're here on my channel for the first time, I make a lot of informative videos. So do subscribe to my channel. Before we start with the concept and you know the whole explanation of advertising and marketing research, let me tell you guys that this jo topic hai, usi mein se sabse zada question aaye hain pichle teen saal ke question paper mein se compile karke ye jo topic hai, wo aapko explain kiya gaya hai. At the same time, aapko har module mein se important topic jo aapko padke jana hai, wo bhi ye video mein mention kiya hua hai. Advertising and market research. The first topic that we touch is fundamentals of research. So research is uh, majorly known as the search for knowledge. And market research is the systematic and objective search for and analysis of information relevant to the identification and solution of any problem in the field of marketing. You can look up the AMA, that is American Market Association's definition on market research, which states that market research is the function which links the consumer, customer and public to the marketer through information. And um, have a look at this definition because it might help you in your answers while writing for your exam. So fundamentals of research talks about the whole process from need to solution, to improving your whole research. And here are the nine stages of research which will be included, which we'll get upon in next few minutes. Objectives of research. So the main objectives of research include explore, exploring and the characteristics involved along with the causal relationship. So when you say explore, uh, we do research and the main objective for research is to explore the new insights that we find. Characteristics includes the descriptive research, which is the in-depth information that you'll need for your research or we'll get through the research. And causal relation is the cause and effect, which is IV and DV. That is, there is a topic that you've taken. It has caused something and it has and that has led to affect something which will be the effect. Uh, for example, the relationship the, between two things. So for example, the relationship between money spent on advertising and sales. Cause is the money spent on ads, that is IV. And the effect will be the effect on sales. Because of the money spent on ads, there will be certain effect on sales of the product or service. So this is the cause and effect uh, example, the causal relationship. Applications. Now, where will we use these fundamentals of research? It can majorly be used in product optimization or product design and track studies to measure brand acceptance or brand usage. It can also be used in basic things like the market strategy, that is the four P's etc. Now coming to market research, we will touch base on the role of market research, the pros and cons of market research and the objectives of market research. So market research includes your target audience, their buying behavior, your competitors and the trends in the market, so on and so forth. The roles of market research includes three. Those are descriptive, diagnostic and predictive. Descriptive means gathering and presenting factual statements, which includes exploratory research. In diagnostic, you explain the in-depth data that you found, which includes descriptive research. 
and predictive means attempting to estimate the results of a planned marketing decision which includes causal research so these are the three roles of marketing research descriptive diagnostic and predictive coming to pros of market research firstly problems may come to light that otherwise wouldn't have been known secondly goals and objectives can be revisited and reevaluate thirdly research material that you work on right now can be used as evidence in legal matters in the future and fourthly better alternatives can be revealed now coming to the cons of market research firstly they could lack scientific training and methodology in the procedure secondly insufficient interaction between the parties involved in your topic which could be the university departments the business establishments or the government institutions thirdly the need of confidence in the data generated fourth is the research studies shouldn't overlap and fifth the code of conduct that should be but um, sometimes is not followed by the researchers the objectives of market research include understanding the target audience to develop campaign ideas and to see if your campaign will work or fit with your findings or not now coming to the main part of the whole subject which is the nine stages of research process first is define research problem and objective in this we have problem discovery problem definition research objectives and hypothesis development in problem discovery you need to state the true cause of the problem which is the initial stage in problem definition you need to put into words what the problem exactly is research objectives means the aim of your research what is going to be the goal and hypothesis development is a tentative theory or an assumption that will guide your investigation or findings now there are types of hypothesis which is null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis the second stage of research process is determine expected value of perfect information now this value of perfect information includes characteristics uh, like relevance quality timeliness which is how much time can this research take the third stage of research process is research technique and to determine the data collection method here comes qualitative and quantitative qualitative is to use words be descriptive and quantitative means to use numbers to analyze your findings The fourth stage of research process is determine the measurement techniques followed by the fifth stage of research process which is the research design or sampling. The sixth stage of research process is data processing and analysis. The seventh stage is determine time and cost. Eighth stage is define the ethics of research and the ninth stage and the final stage is prepare the research report from all these findings you've done so far now coming to some important terms you need to know survey here are some types of surveys a face to face interview a mall intercept that is anywhere with a crowd executive interview that is with people uh, of business class and higher end people a home telephone interview a central location telephone interview which is the company phone is used a computer assisted telephone interview cati direct computer interview which is a normal google form self administered questionnaire which includes aptitude test in classrooms etc a mail surveys and of, of course the internet now coming to observation how do you observe findings that is looking through expressions is it verbal or non verbal is it through a pattern certain approaches to observation research could include natural versus contrived observation which is unconscious and conscious disguised versus undisguised observation which is uh, one is a open observation and one is in disguise structured versus unstructured observation human versus machine observer and direct versus indirect observation 
Coming to experiment method, which includes causal research, that is the cause and effect. So now experiment refers to a research project constructed such that the research, that is who is experimenting, changes one element to observe the effect of that change on another element, which is the dependent variable. Now here are included three aspects, uh, that is the laboratory experiment, the field experiment and a continuous research. In laboratory experiment, internal validity is high, that is you make changes accordingly, that is how you want for the research. That, that means you are under control, the researcher is under control and affects everything that's happening in the space. Whereas a field experiment is where an external validity is high. That is, not everything is under your control. It depends on the topic of you wish to use which experiment. Coming to the third is continuous research, which is a long and extended period of research. That is, again, depending on your topic. If you need one which will keep, you'll need to study elements for a long period of time. Coming to focus group discussions, that is between 8 to 12 people and for 2 hours, led by a moderator and it can get to a conclusion as you wish and it's a centrally located area. It's usually done to brainstorm and come to a conclusion. The role of the moderator is to establish a rapport with the group and provoke the discussion according to your research topic. Now talking about depth interviews. It is basically an in-depth qualitative type of research. It's one on one and it goes on for 30 to 40 minutes. It's between the interviewer and the interviewee. So there's no fixed pattern of questions asked here. It could be any pattern. So here a general series of topics can be covered based on the discussion and also matters that are highly confidential, emotional or embarrassing can be discussed in such interviews. Now coming to sampling design and sampling procedure. It's how you select a small portion of a large population that is going to represent the larger population. You'll be describing the steps you use and the population. You'll be specifying the age and the demographic of your sample. Where are the people available from a particular area or a territory, the sample frame and the sample unit? What will be the size of your sample? Is it 30 or 40? And the sampling techniques, which is which includes a non-probability non or a probability technique. That is a sampling method. How did you take these sample from, how did you take the small bunch from a large bunch? That is, non-probability is an appropriate sample is it experienced and probability is random sample it's like a fair and equal chance to anybody that is the lottery method it could include here yeah. and here is where we come to the probability techniques which includes simple random sampling systematic sampling stratified random sampling cluster sampling and multi-stage sampling now, after learning the nine stages of research design, here is how you'll be designing your research proposal when you, where you start with the topic and the title, then the aim of the research, and then the hypothesis, then the research design, then the research technique. Then you go ahead with sample and the questionnaire, which you'll be making depending on your research topic. So now talking about the methods of collecting secondary data, that is the desk research, which includes the sources of information, that is internal sources that is not published for public or external sources that are made public. So in internal sources, you have sales data by the company, which is not published. Secondly, you have financial data, that is the basic to complicated finances spent. And third, we have transport data that is transportation done uh, fourth we have storage data which is non-perishable goods stored and the pace, space occupied by these goods then coming to external sources that are made public which is the government statistics the trade associations commercial services 
and national or international institutions. Well, now let's look upon the guidelines for devising a good questionnaire. Wordings must be kept simple, use simple jargons or do not. Meaning should be clear and avoid biased responses. And ask one question at a time, do not load with different questions. Avoid personal and intimate questions. Consider the respondent's frame of mind and reference and check if the questions are really necessary. Be sure of the data analysis and the basic response of a question. And here we talk about the types of questions which could be scaled, close-ended, open-ended, completely unstructured. It could be contingency questions which is continuous like one question depends on the previous questions. Then there's matrix question that is areas and sub areas. They are placed one on a one under the other because they're all kind of connected and here we also talk about the question sequence that is there should be a logical flow to your whole questionnaire and the flow from um, least sensitive to the most sensitive like make it like a sandwich and from general to specific that is to your topic from factual to opinion and from unaided to aided questions. Now coming to methods of product research that includes staggered comparison test and paired comparison test. Staggered comparison test. Staggered basically means divided. Here you can test the product or your topic with a small group of people. Whereas a paired comparison test is where loyal and sensitive customers will know the difference in similar products that an ordinary customer cannot define or cannot identify. Coming to brand research, here are the seven categories of brand research. First, brand cat character research. Second, brand logo research. Brand name research. Brand association research brand loyalty research, brand health research, and brand awareness research. And talking about price research, so this research is done before fixing the final price of the product. And it is all about the optimum price product feature configurations and it includes cost of production, equal brand value, etc. And following the topic of price research, we come to the we come to Garber Granger technique and conjoint analysis. In Garber Granger technique, customers are asked to complete a survey and if they would buy a product in a particular price. Whereas in a conjoint analysis, you combine two things that is you present and expose concepts to the respondents. Now coming to the last part of the subject is the four stages of advertising research which includes copy research, copy testing, pre-testing and post-testing. So in short, copy research is the beginning of creation process. Copy testing is the end of the creation process. Pre-testing is the end of production stage and post-testing is after the campaign is launched. Now going to the important topics that have been come in the exam over and over again for the last three years is module 3's designing questions using projective part and qualitative and quantitative research. Module 4, process of sampling and methods of sampling. Module 8, report writing. The entire module itself is in bits and pieces of a very important topic of report writing. In module 9, copy research, copy testing, psychological rating scales or neuroscience and the halo effect. Module 10, marketing research under that, the important topics are branding research, pricing research, packaging research and product testing. A few extra topics can be research methods and the hypothesis and scaling. I hope guys the video was informative. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.